Hey guys, my name is Christoph Klipfel, coming to you here from Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you today. Wish I could have been in Prague to meet you all, but uh, hey, I guess I guess this is uh, the next best thing. So um, yeah, today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to control special effects hardware, specifically lighting hardware, like uh, you know, like these LED strips up here, or like. Uh, you know, these cool kinds of lights, um, entirely from Unreal Engine. Um, now, before I get into that, on um, you know, the, the plugin and whatnot, um, just a little intro on myself. Um, my name is Christoph. I'm co-founder of Geodesic Games. Um, we are a software development studio that specializes in creating custom Unreal Engine integrations. And um, over the past year or so, we've been working with Epic Games to bring you guys uh, this cool new feature, um, to control DMX lighting, which we'll talk about today. So without further ado, um, let's just jump right in. All right, so like I mentioned, uh, we've been working with Epic Games to bring you guys the DMX plugin, and it's now available. It's been released in Unreal Engine 425. So um, you can actually go you know, download the engine and start playing with it right now if you'd like. It's included with the engine, so you just go, got, got to go to plugins and then uh, select the three plugins that we have available. Um, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the talk. So what we're going to talk about today is what DMX is, uh, how it's currently being used in various industries. Um, we'll also talk about how DMX works and its current capabilities for those who are just getting into DMX and want to sort of understand a little more about it. We'll go through uh, like an overview of DMX in Unreal Engine context and, and how that's all working together. And then um, some possible use cases and new opportunities that, that this brings up. Um, and then we'll sort of end the video with a, a demo of DMX usage in a remote virtual production workflow, which uh, I'm pretty excited about that. So, so first of all, what is DMX? Now, you might say, oh, the wrapper, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, not today. But DMX is a standard for digital communication networks that are commonly used for uh, controlling stage lighting and effects. So... If you've ever been to um, like a music festival or some live event and you see these these light beams that are up in the air and there's fog everywhere, um, there are a lot of different types of hardware and these are all controlled via the DMX protocol. So like, you know, the foggers and, and the lights that you see here. Um, so all these things are, are controlled via the DMX standard. Now, in, in my talk description, I said that this is for special effects hardware. And the reason for that is because there's lots of different things that you can control. So not only lights, but, you know, we have things like lasers and foggers and fireworks and flame machines and motors, pulleys, uh, water jets, LED panels and LED strips, you know, the list goes on. There's so much that you can do with it. Now, let's think about what sort of uses there are in the current industries. So one of the most popular is in you know the music industry when music festivals and concerts and shows dmx is being used to control lighting and lasers and stuff for a visualization tool for audience communication so we're, we're communicating to the audience you know what the audio is doing to provide a better effect um, within the film production industry it's used as sort of this light compositing and scene matching so you can make the actor or or the the target of the film seem more like it's actually in the scene, I guess, that they're trying to um, portray. In in the broadcast and TV industry, we have sort of the same thing, just like lighting up the area, making it feel like it's a separate environment. Um, and then we have theater and dance, highlighting points of interest. We have lighting installations. And one thing that many people don't think about are actually fountain shows. So uh, if you ever go to Las Vegas or, you know, any place that might have these, these fountains shooting up, they're all programmed via DMX. Um, there's a lot of other use cases as well, like in architecture and whatnot, but uh, this is just the most popular ones. All right, now before we get into sort of, uh, you know, the Unreal Engine and, and everything about DMX within Unreal Engine, I think it's important to understand a little bit about, you know, how DMX works and what it's really composed of. So we'll start, of, start off with just like packet structure. Um, now, DMX is simply just a packet of numerical data. Uh, it's composed of an array of 512 bytes, and each byte contains a value from 0 to 255. Now, each of these bytes is actually responsible for an attribute or function of the controlled hardware device. So what, what kind of things could an attribute be? Well, this could be, you know, the amount of red in the light, or the rotation of a motor, or, you know, your green, um, or the rate of your strobe. It could be a lot of different things, but 
these are uh, our functions or controls that are usually defined inside of the hardware itself and provided by the manufacturer inside the manual. So as you can see here down at the bottom, I have an image from one of these manuals and, and this is a fixture, it's a four channel fixture that contains you know red, green, blue, and white. Um, and if we, if we actually look at how this would be in, in the packet itself, um, this would be so like we have zero for our first channel, we have 255 for a second, um, and zero for a third and so on. So in this case, we would have zero red showing up, we would have full green coming from our light, um, we would have no blue, and we'd have about mid white. So that just gives you like an idea of how this would work in, in um, a real context. Uh, next, I want to talk about sort of how the signal is flowing between the different pieces of hardware. So usually in a, in a DMX um, system, you have a DMX controller, which is actually responsible for receiving that DMX data. Um, or usually it's a, a some sort of protocol that doesn't actually have the proper data that it needs and that controller will actually send out to a chain of fixtures. So a DMX controller can be, you know, um, like a whole console that has a bunch of faders or it can be even just a simple box that manages uh, data translation. But what happens is it sends DMX down a line through DMX cables um, and each fixture just picks up the, it just reads the data and then um, responds to the relevant data that's that's specific for it. So each fixture actually has its own address that it's specified at, which determines more or less the, the virtual location of that fixture. Now, in sort of an Unreal Engine perspective, it's important to understand that we're not just sending, um, we're not using like the computer as a controller itself, but instead um, sending a protocol through the network from Unreal Engine and from the Unreal Engine PC, which then will go through the router and be picked up by the DMX controller. Um, and so we're doing this via network protocols, which uh, I'll get on to in the next slide. So network protocols are a way in which we can control and send and receive DMX through uh, through the network entirely wirelessly. So it's, it's really cool. And it also gives us more power and control in, in how much data we can send. So this enables us to send a greater group of channels or universes than sending from just directly from a console, which will have sort of a, a defined set of universes that we can send to. So in this image, you can see here, we've got, this is a sort of an example of what you can do. You could have a bunch of different routers that are all connected on a VPN and then uh, just broadcast DMX and have all of them sort of pick it up individually. It's really powerful. And so the, the different protocols that, we can do this with our, um, at least with, with the Unreal Engine plugin, is we have two supported, which are ArtNet and SACN. ArtNet is the most popular network protocol that enables the transport of DMX data, and we have a maximum of 32,768 universes that we can actually control. Um, and then SACN is a sort of a, a newer protocol, and it has support for even more universes up to 63,999. So if we do a little bit of math, we can determine that if we have 512 channels times the 63,999 universes, that gives us a control of over 32 million addresses. So that means we have 32 you know, hardware functions that we could actually control. So it's pretty, pretty powerful. All right, now let's, uh, let's get into sort of the Unreal Engine and talk about this in an Unreal Engine context. Why Unreal Engine? Well, Unreal Engine provides us with um, programmatic and real-time control, um, just as as a, a real-time engine. Um, it has a lot of functionality, and now if we apply that towards uh, sort of hardware fixtures themselves, the amount of things that we can do just blossoms. We can do so many more things. It's really exciting. The second reason is there's there's an ever-expanding community of Unreal Engine developers and content creators, and now they can start to utilize their skills that they you know, apply towards game development or, or some other types of content creation in new ways. Maybe that's in sort of the film production industry or in the music industry and audio visualization or, or whatever it may be. Next, we have uh, improved immersion and realism that can be achieved uh, via Unreal Engine for the film and movie production industries. Um, in which, you know, if you have some sort of uh, CG or special effects that are going on in your virtual scene, you can actually have the lighting up the actor respond accordingly to that. And it can be entirely programmatic, automated, it could be 
uh, a lot of different things it can be based off, you know, where the camera is. It's just, it opens up a whole lot of opportunities within the, the, the film industry as well. And then finally, real time data can now be translated into sort of responsive hardware. So it's not that we can just send to DMX, but we can also sort of receive it as well. Um, and we have this communication now between the software and the hardware, which bridges, you know, that bridges that gap and brings our physical and digital world a little bit closer. So, you know, if we provide this kind of control to the amazing community of Unreal Engine developers and programmers, like, you know, what's going to happen? What, what are people going to create? I don't know, but I'm very excited to uh, see how this this evolves. So, all right, now let's get into um, the plugins themselves. So uh, there are three plugins available with this DMX um, system. The first ones I want to talk about are DMX Engine and DMX Protocol. Now, when you go to the your plugin settings and you search for DMX, you'll you'll get these three. And um, if you just want to control sort of core DMX functionality, you're going to want to enable the DMX Engine and the DMX Protocol plugins. These are responsible for sending, receiving. Um, we have Blueprint functions built into it. Uh, we have a DMX library. It's a custom asset for data routing and patching and managing your fixtures. We have debugging tools um, for visualizing input and output. And you can import some fixture profiles to, I guess, get data from fixtures that already exist and just import their data right away. So, And then we have our DMX fixtures plugin, which is a collection of Blueprint templates for uh, getting started with pre-visualization, more or less. We have a moving head template, we have a static LED template, we have a moving mirror template, we have a strobe template. Um, and what you can do is take these blueprints, throw them into your scene, set up a couple properties, and they'll start responding to DMX right away without you having to program really any blueprints at all. So you can just get started and start making things like this this amazing scene down below um, with tons of different lights and... Uh, uh, you know, really go wild. After hearing all this, you probably have some cool ideas and are thinking about the, the opportunities here. And now I just wanted to talk about a couple here. So first of all, you could think about projecting your virtual scene lighting into real environments with DMX, which results in sort of this improved realism and immersion. Um, this is one use case that's that's pretty exciting. We have virtual events and concerts that can now be developed using Unreal Engine, and you could even run those concerts using standard DMX equipment because the DMX plugin integrates same functionality that many of the, the tools in the industry are also uh, implement. And then um, one thing that I also think about a lot is a sort of real-world response to in-game events. So if you have a video game and then you incorporate DMX into it, um, you can start to control a bunch of different hardware depending on just like events that are happening inside the game. So I think about like esports, right? If if a player dies, for instance, and you have a light hooked up, you could have that light turn, you know, red when that player dies. Or if or if they win, you have a bunch of lights shine on the winner and then stuff goes off. So combining this in-game control or this this in-game responsiveness to to uh, events could be really cool. So now let's uh, let's get on to our demo. Now, what's actually going to happen in this de demo is we're going to do some remote control of DMX. So since we're in a remote world these days, um, we decided to continue with this theme. And so I'm going to be here in Denver sending DMX data from my Unreal Engine project and have it received in um, our virtual production studio, which is in Amsterdam, Netherlands. In terms of the hardware control, I'm going to be using actually a MIDI controller to convert that MIDI into DMX inside of Unreal Engine, and then have the physical lights in uh, Amsterdam respond to the incoming DMX that I'm sending from here. And then in terms of software control, we're going to have our virtual lights update in both editor and runtime to uh, the received DMX. And so while it's uh, primarily built for runtime, um, I've also been able to get editor working through the use of editor utility widgets, um, which is super cool. So I would uh, highly recommend looking into editor utility widgets. And finally, while we're not going to be using this too much, um, we're going to be utilizing the multi-user editing plugin just because that would work really well within a you know virtual production context. So now let's look at how all of this is really working together in a, in a diagram because there's there's a lot going on here. So first of all, we have our MIDI. So I have a, I have some faders which are sending out MIDI. 
um, and it's sending it directly into Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine then takes that data, converts it into DMX, and sends it over the network through the ArtNet protocol um, to a router which is connected on a, a VPN. So um, while it's only going to be two computers here, I, I wanted to show three because it could be as many as you wanted um, because it's going to be broadcasting and, and all devices that are on the virtual private network, the VPN, will receive the network DMX. So what's going to happen is it's going to send the ArtNet DMX over, uh, over the VPN, over the network. Um, the router in, in Amsterdam will pick it up and send that over to the Unreal Engine machine there. And then here's, here's an important thing to note is that because we're on a VPN, we now have to translate that into our local network in order to control our fixtures. And so we'll provide a, um, a proxy plugin, which will actually take that DMX ArtNet data um, and convert it into our local network, convert from the VPN into the lo local network, and then send from um, the router via Ethernet to the DMX controller, which will then convert that and send it out to the fixture. So there's a lot going on here, but it's really cool that this all works together, and that's exactly why I wanted to show you it. So um, with all of that, let's, uh, let's jump into the demo and uh, show you how this all works. All right, so here I am in my Unreal Engine project. And uh, now before I get into like showing off the demo and showing um, what the re remote DMX control is all about, um, I first want to go over what you need to do to sort of configure uh, your own sort of DMX projects and what I configured here in order to make all of this work, at least from a DMX plugin standpoint. So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is enabling the plugins. So um, as with any plugin, you can come up to edit here, go to plugins, and uh, let's search for DMX. And we've got three plugins that we're presented with here. We have DMX Engine, DMX Fixtures, and DMX Protocols, um, as I mentioned earlier in the talk. Uh, I've enabled all of these already. The DMX Engine and DMX Protocol give us our core functionality, and then the DMX Fixtures uh, gives us those, uh, those template blueprints, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's uh, close that. Now, the first thing I want to talk about within the DMX plugin is um, how we manage our data, um, and that is through a, a custom asset we've created called a DMX library. Now, the DMX library is where we store all of our, our data associated with our controllers, um, our fixture types, and our fixture patches, as well as additionally, um, we have some tools in there for monitoring and testing as well. So. Um, the first thing we'll do is let's uh, let's discuss the controllers tab here. So this is where we set up our properties that that manage the actual broadcasting or sending of DMX, including you know the type of communication mode, um, our universe starts and ranges. So you can see here I've set up mine to be one, my local universe start to be one, my amount of universes to be two, my remote universe range start to be one. Um, to keep things consistent, and my protocol here to be ArtNet. Um, so yeah, those, those are controllers. Let's uh, next go on to our fixture types tab. In the fixture type, this is where we really set up the kinds of fixtures that we're going to be working with, as well as their associated functions slash attributes. You can see here I, I've set up two already. We have one which is a moving head and one which is a static. Now I'm going to be using the static one primarily in, in, in the demo. Um, and you can see I've got uh, one mode set up already. And inside that mode we have a number of functions. So you can see this includes intensity and color temp and uh, uh, red and green and so on and so forth. Um, now, so I, I've, you might notice that I've set these up sort of manually, um, but uh, there is another way that we could do this, um, and that is through uh, a cool feature we've implemented here called uh, our GDTF import. Um, so uh, what I have done is I've, I've gone to a website called uh, GDTF-share, and there you can download... Um, a GTF which contains fixture profile information. Um, all you need to do is uh, create a quick account and then download some some free uh, some free fixture profiles. You can even set up your own there. But you can see I've created a or I've, I've downloaded and imported a fixture profile for um, the clay packy sharpie. Um, and if we go into our DMX library, 
I can actually take this fixture profile, import it, and automatically get all of the, the functions and data associated with that fixture profile. So let me just give you an example here. So if I click new fixture, I'll name this one Sharpie. And I can go into, I can set this as a moving head. And then um, I just click this drop down and we'll select my GDTF file. And you can see right away, uh, it automatically populates our modes um, with the names as well as our functions with all of the names and the, uh, the data um, associated with each function. So uh, it's pretty cool and pretty handy. So I definitely suggest looking into that and using that more. Um, next we have uh, our fixture patch panel. Now this is where we're actually going to register and, and set up our fixtures to be at a particular location in our chain. So um, whenever you set up your DMX fixture, it's always going to ask you to uh, set some sort of starting address for the, the physical hardware itself. And so um, either through dip switches or through uh, um, a digital display, you'll set up that starting address. And in here, in our fixture patch, we just want to make sure that those things are matching. So um, what I've done here already is I've set up my two fixture patches that I would like to use. Um, and you can do that by just clicking this add fixture and selecting one of these that you would like. So you can see if I select this Sharpie, um, it'll automatically put into universe one. And then because I have an auto assigned channel here, it'll just assign it to the next available channel. And so that would be 16 since the, the previously occupied one was 15. Um, so you can see because of the number of functions that we have in our fixture type for this particular fixture, this goes from channel 16 up to 31. But I don't need this right now. Um, that was just for an example. You can see how it works with these guys here. Um, additionally, we can set our active mode. And uh, if we wanted to, we can even set a channel manually. But uh, so if I set this to 10, for instance, you can see this automatically goes to 10 and this follows that. But um, I want it to be just one, so we'll set it back to auto assign. All right, next let's go into um, our some cool tools that we have here. So uh, we also have an output console, and this is where we can set up some faders and really test whether our output is, uh, is working properly. Um, so as you can see, I've gone through and I've actually added a fader here. Um, so you can do that by just setting up these properties. I've set up my universe to be one, my address to be one, and I've clicked add fader. Um, and then if we look over on the right side, this is where we can actually see our, our DMX data coming in. So um, if I move this, you can see actually it, it updating on the right side with uh, that data coming in. So pretty cool. We can set this over here to SACN if we want and to any universe we would like to monitor as well. So. Uh, yeah, so that's a that's a DMX library um, pretty quickly there. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is our DMX blueprint templates. If you would like to use some of these DMX blueprint templates, uh, you can get access to them in the engine content. But the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have actually show engine content uh, checked here in your content browser. So. Um, once we do that, we can come down to our DMX fixtures here, and you can see I've got a uh, BP static fixture. So I'll just pull this out real quick. Um, and what this is is essentially just a yeah, just a template that we can use uh, to uh, get going with uh, with pre visualization um, and lighting just uh, right out of the box. So all I would really need to configure to get this working is um, first of all, we need to make sure that we uh, connect this to some fixture patch that we have uh, set up. And we can do that by pulling down here and selecting our DMX component, which we've actually set inside of our blueprint itself. And um, our DMX component gives us access to both a library and a fixture patch. Uh, so um, I can set this to some library. So we'll do my DMX library here. And then this gives us uh, the option of one of the fixture patches we've set up. So for instance, it could be my Falcon eyes. Now I've already done this with um, a couple uh, other lights in the scene. So I won't, I won't be using this one here, but um, uh, I'll show you uh, later in the ones that I already have in the scene now. 
Um, now, one other thing to mention here with these blueprint templates is uh, we also have some some functions um, function mapping here uh, that we need to set up in order for everything to work properly. So let's uh, let's delete this one, and I'll show you on the fixtures I have set up. So this is actually one of the the custom fixtures I've set up to work in the scene. Now, um, if you look over on the right hand side, you can see if I select my DMX component here. I've set it up to uh, be my Falcon Eyes fixture. But additionally, um, if we come down to the bottom here, I've, I've set up my uh, function names to match those that were inside of my fixture type. So if you remember um, when we were in our DMX library, um, under the fixture types, uh, we have a number of functions here. And so uh, for instance, intensity and red and green and blue and whatnot. Um, so what I've done is I've come over here and I've just set these uh, uh, these names to match those inside of the um, the fixture type panel there. So if I undo this, you can see it's originally set to dimmer, but I actually want this to be intensity. Um, cool. Now that we have those set up, we can actually uh, actually start testing our DMX to see if everything is, is working properly. Um, now there's one thing I do want to mention before I really show you uh, a test here, and that is that if you happen to have multiple network cards, you want to make sure that you configure those properly as well. And you can do that by going up to our, uh, you can go to your project settings, and then come down to uh, DMX plugin. And you can see I've actually set up my IP interface address here. Um, now, if you're wondering how you how you do this um, and how you find your IP address, you can just go to your command prompt. You can search IP config or type IP config, and uh, your IP address will be listed under one of your um, ports. Now, um, I'm using a VPN here, so uh, I will be using this. IP address, which I've taken and I just put in there. So that should be everything that we need to set up the DMX and get started with that. So let me, um, now that that is working, let me just give you a quick example of all the things working together and uh, show you my, um, my utility widget that allows us to use MIDI to also control these DMX lights. So um, if we come into our DMX folder here um, and we go to our BT, BPs and our utility widget. I, I've created a custom utility widget that actually allows us to uh, to see these updated in editor without um, playing in runtime. So um, I'm going to run this utility widget, and so this allows me to select some MIDI device um, and then some blueprint or some uh, DMX fixture that I want to control. Now, keep in mind this is this is a, a utility widget that's not provided by the plugin itself, but I will be providing it in this project. So if you want to use it um, or see what I've done here, uh, you can look into it. So first thing I want to do here is select my MIDI controller. And next, um, I want to test this guy. So I can just click my control selected here. And then if I start moving my, um, my faders, you'll actually see it start to update. So you can see here, as I move my red, it actually starts turning red, and then we have green, and we also have blue. So uh, very cool that we have that working in editor um, and ready to go. So those are the, uh, the primary things that we need to uh, get configured and set up. If you'd like to learn more about the what's actually going on behind the scenes inside of these in, in regards to blueprints and um, the, the functionality that you've got on, on that side of things, um, uh, there are, are some other tutorials out there. Um, I don't have time to go into it today, but uh, you can also, you know, download the project or go into the uh, the blueprint templates and see how um, the blueprint templates are using the the DMX plugins. So, with that being said, let's get on to our full demo with the remote control. Okay, so here we are in our Unreal Engine project, and um, I have just set up a, a multi-user editing server, which Kass has uh, joined on um, on his PC in Amsterdam, so you can see him over there in scene moving. Yep, awesome. 
Um, now, so for those of you that aren't familiar with uh, what multi-user editing is, it's, um, it's essentially a tool that allows uh, multiple users to collaborate on a single scene and be able to sync up all the changes and, and see what everybody's actually doing at the same time. So to give you a quick example here, so you know I, I can take this cube here, put it in the scene, and uh, Cust should actually be able to see that change in real time. So Cust, do you see the cube? Yeah, I can uh, see the cube. <laughs> awesome, you can even move it there, cool. All right, so I'm going to delete that. Um, so now that we've got our, our scene um, changes synced up, let's also get our DMX changes synced up. And so we're going to do that through the use of um, our editor utility widget that I discussed a little earlier in the talk. Um, so I'm going to get this set up with my MIDI settings and DMX settings. So Kas, if you could do the same thing on your side, um, that would be great. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to set my MIDI controller to the one I have connected. And then I'm going to select the two lights that I have inside of my scene um, and click Control Selected. So um, we should actually be ready to go at this point. Um, but uh, before, I, before I start moving some faders and, and send you some DMX, I want to say that um, we have a couple of views that you should see uh, right now. And um, first of all, you should see a view of uh, my screen, which is um, here in Denver, uh, which is my, my Unreal Engine project. Um, additionally, you should see a view of my DMX controller that I'm going to be using to actually send the DMX um, and control sort of the color mixing. And then uh, on Casa's side, you should see his uh, uh, Unreal Engine project as well with the camera feed that he's getting for the virtual production, um, as well as a view of our actual physical virtual production setup um, with the green screen and, and DMX fixtures and all that. So, and if you look closely at that, uh, the physical setup that we have, you should notice actually we have a mannequin um, in the center, which is acting as our, you know, our, our target or our actor or actress, right? And, and so what's going to happen in this demo here is I'm going to be moving some faders on, on my side um, and actually control the light that not only uh, changes the light in the scene, but will also change the light, um, the physical light in uh, our virtual production studio, and that will that light will then reflect onto our um, uh, onto our mannequin and make it appear as if you know the mannequin is actually really in that virtual scene. So, um, with that being said, let's uh, let's give it a shot. So, first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start just moving one of the faders. You can see it's already uh, outputting some light. Um, I'm going to put my uh, the the fixture into a color mixing mode, so I'll put those two up. And uh, now I can start uh, actually changing some of the colors and and getting some response in the scene. So you can see as I move my red, the there's a um, the scene is also turning red, and so are the materials. Um, I can turn it to blue. I can do some color mixing. We can make it white. There's a lot of a lot we can do here. Um, so. Kas, from, from what you've seen, or do you have any, any suggestions or things that you'd like to see that the actress lit up with? Yeah, I think the, the red matches the scene pretty well. Can you try some of that? All right. So we'll bring up a little bit of red here. Something, something like this? Yeah, maybe a little brighter. A little brighter? Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so you know we could uh, we could do some like red alley way like this, or or we can completely change it and you know put it up to blue. And and th the cool part about this is that it's not only happening inside the scene, but you know our our target is also being lit up with that same lighting. So um, you can see that this is a really powerful tool. Um, if you're working together with a number of people, you can really collaborate and get the lighting just like you want it. Um, and you know it, it's it's amazing that this is not only you know happening like on the set, but we can do this uh, from, you know, we can do this virtually. So right now, you know, we're, we're halfway across the world from each other and uh, we can still work together and collaborate on uh, a single scene. So this is extremely valuable and very, um, very powerful, especially in our, you know, socially distant world that we live in today. So, um, you know, with, with that being said, I think this is a good, uh, good place to stop. And we will um, go back to our slides real quick for some, some finishing thoughts um, for the end of the talk. All right, so thanks a lot for uh, hanging out today. And um, we just want to say, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments regarding the plugin um, or, you know, just anything else. If you just like to chat or if you'd like to uh, 
uh, discuss some cool projects, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to us. You can find our email um, down below here. And um, uh, if you can reach out to me on Discord uh, with the ID provided there. Now, one last thing here is uh, we are hiring. So if you or anybody you know um, is an Unreal Engine C++ developer and interested in getting involved with what, we, what we're doing here and likes, you know, playing around with cool hardware like we do or um, uh, working on cool new technology, uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd uh, love to chat further. So um, again, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll talk to you in the Q&A.